San Antonio police have had a busy evening and morning investigating several shootings. Katrina Weber tells us where officers are in those investigations. Palo Alto College getting a new building. Sarah Costa has the details on this bond funded construction project. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio seems to have developed a violent streak overnight. Yeah, police are investigating about a half dozen shootings that happened within a 12 hour window between last night and this morning. Katrina Weber tells us they happened all over the map, including one death. Just as this morning was getting started, San Antonio police also were beginning to investigate a shooting, the fifth within a 12 hour period. This time they were on South General McMullen near Roselawn, where a man says he was riding his bicycle around 7 a.m. He says people in a black sedan drove up, tried to take his bike, then shot him in the leg when he fought back. Random violence also struck in two other West Side locations last night. A 17 year old boy who was playing basketball on Horizon Star around 9 p.m. was hit by gunfire in a drive by shooting. About an hour later, one man in a car was wounded in his shoulder and another grazed on his hand as they drove by a motel not far from Joint Base Lackland. They drove to another location off Southwest Loop 410 to call for help. A family disturbance on the southeast side on Smallwood a few hours before that also had left a man with a gunshot wound in his shoulder. Well, all of these happened after a deadly shooting near downtown around 7 last night. Police found a man in a parking lot behind Lulu's restaurant on North Main with a gunshot wound in his head. The investigation here had police starting from scratch. They said they didn't even know the name of the murder victim. He had no ID on him. They were hoping to find surveillance video that might provide some clues. As in all of the other cases, they did not make any arrests right away. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a man is dead after a crash on the city's northeast side. Now police want to find the other driver that was involved. Officers tell us 48-year-old Philip Warren Snow III was riding a motorcycle on O'Connor Road near Larkdale Drive yesterday morning. Police say a driver in a black SUV was driving erratically and ended up crashing, uh, causing a crash with that motorcyclist. The person in the SUV then kept driving without stopping to help that victim. Snow was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police say when they find the driver that's responsible, that person will be facing a failure to stop and render aid charge. We have some new details this noon. Police now saying a man told them he was panicked and scared, and that's why he left the scene of a deadly crash. The officers accused 70 year old, rather 50 year old Jerome Armstrong of hitting and killing a man while he was behind the wheel of a pickup truck last week. According to arrest paperwork, the 75 year old victim was walking near Pecan Valley Drive and Goliad Road trying to cross the street. That's when police say he was hit by Armstrong. Officers say the suspect and two other drivers pulled over, checked the damage to Armstrong's truck. The two witnesses then went to help the victim, but then the suspect drove off. An anonymous tipster led police to Armstrong. He told officers he was waiting for them to show up on his doorstep. He was charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. This noon, we are still working to learn a man's identity after he was hit and killed uh, by a driver on the east side. A crash happened just before 6 p.m. yesterday on Loop 410 between Rigsby Avenue and South Cross Boulevard. Police say the victim was walking across the highway when he was hit by a driver in a pickup truck. Officers say that driver did stop and called 911, so that person is not expected to face any charges. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. And another driver also in the clear after a crash early this morning. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, a man saw something in the road and slowed down but was unable to stop before realizing it was a person. This was in the 23,700 block of Mathis Road. We're told the victim was walking in the middle of a traffic lane. He was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Investigators say the driver will not face any charges because he stopped to help the man after the accident. Now to an update on the coronavirus crisis here in Bear County. The seven day rolling average 
rising to 234. 417 new cases were reported yesterday. No new deaths were reported. However, health officials say 294 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 55 of those people are from El Paso, where hospitals are being overwhelmed. Metro Health reporting 118 patients are in the ICU and 56 people are on ventilators. And right now, the U.S. has more COVID-19 cases than any other nation. More than 238,000 people have died in our country after contracting the virus. On the vaccine front, some good news from drug maker Pfizer, who says its experimental COVID-19 vaccine appears to be working. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest from El Paso, a community hit hard by the pandemic. It could be said that El Paso is the ground zero of COVID in the country right now. Over a 1,000% increase in COVID cases just over the past few weeks. Every single hospital in this county is inundated at overcapacity, which is why you see those med search tents outside. And a funeral home director told me they are at 100% capacity, which is why the state has already shipped in six morgue trucks and four more have been requested. That as we hit that horrific milestone nationwide, 10 million COVID cases, 74 people every minute contract the virus in the United States right now. And we could be headed towards a million cases a week very soon. Um, across the country, a little bit of good news, despite the fact that every state in the nation has an increasing number of cases. The FDA has approved an antibody treatment for those with uh, mild symptoms of the virus. People who are not hospitalized. And in addition to that, of course, the vaccine from Pfizer, apparently um, about 90 percent effective, something that Anthony Fauci said is very, very good news. Still, the big concern here is that we're in the midst of flu season. People are about to gather for the Thanksgiving holiday and both the antibody treatment and the vaccine may not be here quickly enough to have an impact on this second wave. Matt Gutman, ABC News, El Paso, Texas. Meantime, across the country, in response to officers killing people they come into contact with, there's been growing demand for police reform. And a lot of discussions about reform and accountability are centering around body cameras worn by police officers, specifically if and when to release footage. The debate is the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Here in San Antonio, the police department launching a pilot program that was back in March of 2014. And ultimately, they started outfitting officers with body cameras in February of 2016. It's important that we document interactions that police have with citizens and vice versa. These cameras will change behavior on both sides of the cameras. But just because the officers are outfitted with body cameras does not necessarily mean the footage is automatically released. In this week's episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look at the transparency body-worn camera footage can provide and the possible shortcomings. KSAT Explains, the body camera debate will be available to stream on the KSAT TV app this Thursday. New at noon, Alamo College's Palo Alto College will be getting a new building that will serve as a center for students and the community. Sarah Costa was at the groundbreaking this morning and shows us what the bond funded building will entail. The 35 year old Palo Alto College campus has a new beacon of hope for students and the Southside community. The Alamo College's district campus, Palo Alto, broke ground this morning for its new bond funded multi purpose building, which will be the largest building on campus. In 2017, Bear County voters approved a $450 million bond. $66 million is going to the Palo Alto campus for this multi purpose building and other campus renovations. The building, which will be named the Rio Grande, will have labs for robotics, cybersecurity, dental hygiene, criminal justice, and more. It will also reach out to the community with its simulated courtroom and community health clinic. We didn't have this type of building, this type of facility that supports and facilitates learning and engagement in the way that this facility does. It is believed the building will boost the economy and the workforce for the Southside community. It's projected to be completed by the fall of 2022. From the Southside, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News.
Still ahead on the news at noon, just as the Yankees find themselves in the top five of the nation, they get hit with some bad news as the program is forced to temporarily shut down. Details later in sports. The annual Raul Jimenez dinner is going to look different this year. However, one thing won't change. They still need lots of volunteers. How you can help after the break. A San Antonio tradition will continue this year. However, the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner is going to look different. This year, they're going to be teaming up with organizations like Meals on Wheels, so Thanksgiving feasts can be delivered. They're also hoping safely to feed 10,000 people this year. The team kicked things off this morning with a virtual press conference, and Mayor Ron Nuremberg even cut the first piece of pie. Walmart donating $20,000 to help put the dinner together, but organizers also need your help. This year, the greatest and sole volunteer need, along with donations and financial support, will be for delivery volunteers. If you're interested in doing that and you want some more information, you can go to the RoyalLumenezDinner.com. There's also a place where you can register to be a volunteer. If you're looking for something to do with the family this evening, the San Antonio Botanical Garden has you covered. Beginning at 6 tonight until 9, you can take part in their family flashlight night event. For the standard admission fee, you and your family will be able to experience the nocturnal side of the garden. Explore the Botanical Garden by moonlight. Find your way through the light maze as well as hands-on activities and fun tours. There will also be a cash bar and food for sale. You can find a link to the prices and location information right now on ksat.com. Hopefully the weather will well, clear you know, out a little bit. Skies will be clear by that time tonight. That's good. So that's some good news there. Although right now outside it is kind of gross looking. It's cloudy and we've even had visibility down to a mile and a half in some places around San Antonio. We actually do have a cool front on the way, but it's not going to make it feel too much cooler out there. So one can dream, right? And enjoy the colors in Lost Maples. This is a beautiful view of the reds out in Lost Maples sent on our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. So thank you for sending those in. Uh, as I mentioned, it is cloudy and there have been some areas of light rain out there. You may have seen Sarah coast outside with the rain. A little bit of light rain. It's not amounting to much. Uh, it's not important rain because it's not going to really help our uh, drought situation that we're in. Visibility right now at the airport is OK. It's at 10 miles at 73 degrees outside and I want to show you the satellite imagery because as you can see it's still fairly cloudy around San Antonio. The radar went out briefly but there is some light rain working its way from Kendall County into Comal County just near Canyon Lake and as you can see behind it out toward Lakey, Kerrville, Rock Springs, starting to see some sunshine. There's the cool front. Notice that the temperature difference is not that much. It's 64 in Kerrville and 73 in San Antonio. So while we are not going to see a big drop in temperatures from this front, it is going to set up a beautiful Veterans Day tomorrow. So I'll be back with a look ahead at how cool it'll be to start the day for Veterans Day and how uh, that day will shape up for us as well as taking a look at the rest of the week. <laughs> this morning, I, I was so happy to see the rain, but then if you actually count the raindrops, yeah. it's, it's more of that nuisance. Yes, not so much. It's thing. not good if you can count the raindrops. <laughs> right. because that means, well, they're so itty bitty. Yeah, that, that means count. there's not that much rain out there, and this is definitely not a cold front that is bringing us anything substantial rain wise and temperature wise. We're not going to see a quick shift in temperature, but you will notice when it moves through because it'll become drier and it'll become windier. So let's take another look outside. You can barely, barely see San Antonio's cityscape there on that live cam. And the reason for that is low clouds, and we've even had some fog and some drizzle in the area within the last couple of hours or so. So it's 73 degrees outside. Temperatures really haven't risen too much from this morning. And the reason for that is the clouds, of course. Visibility is OK at the airport, uh, and we are seeing some improvement on the visibility uh, around San Antonio. But earlier, visibility was down to two miles, mile and a half in some places. And I showed you this uh, before the break here. You can see very, very clearly 
where the front is. Uh, when looking at the satellite imagery, that line of clouds right there, and even looking at some of the rain that was light rain that was in Kendall County, the radar went out briefly, but now that light rain is probably right near uh, 281, just to the west of Canyon Lake. Uh, and so again, while we're not seeing any substantial rain, we are seeing something. And notice how quickly skies are clearing behind that front. So there's where the front is right now. It's currently moving to the south. It'll be in San Antonio within the next hour, hour and a half or so. And you'll notice a couple of things. A little bit of a temperature drop, maybe by a couple of degrees or so. As you can see, temperatures behind the front in the 60s in Kerrville, 63 in Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg briefly dipped down to 57. Notice out in Del Rio, it's still 80 degrees out there, and that's because they're seeing tons of sunshine. You'll notice a maybe a slight drop in temperatures, but you'll really notice the drier air moving through. Dew points are in the 60s around San Antonio. That's muggy, that's noticeable, but behind the front, dew points have dropped down into the 30s. And so that will set up a very beautiful Veterans Day for us. We will not have to deal with high humidity. It's going to be very nice outside, very refreshing to see that change in the humidity. And then also winds are going to switch around to the north. Winds are from the north in Kerrville, about 10 miles per hour in Fredericksburg at about 15. So we'll have winds from the north at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now, if you go up to the north, you can really see the effect of this cool front. Uh, you, a lot of snowfall across parts of the Dakotas and Nebraska and a big drop in temperatures. It's in the 30s up in the northern tier of the United States. We just this front just ran out of room and it's really not going to cool us down very much. But here's what you can expect in the future cast. That front will fall apart over our coastal communities, so it'll probably be a fairly cloudy start for Beeville, Victoria, Hallettsville, maybe even Carn City. But here in San Antonio tomorrow, sunny skies all day long. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. So for the rest of the day, 76 at 4. Notice how skies are clearing. Sunsets at 5, uh, 41, and temperatures will fall off pretty quickly. By midnight, we'll be in the 50s, and we'll have northwest winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Veterans Day waking up at 52 degrees, sunshine all day long. Really increase in temperature pretty quickly. 80 degrees for the high, but again, remember the key here is low humidity, so it is going to feel like fall tomorrow. We'll have north northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. In the forecast over the next seven days, we've got a couple of wimpy fronts to talk about. All right, we have one that will arrive on Saturday. So the day before on Friday, it'll be cloudy with a drizzle a lot like today. Uh, and then that front will arrive on Saturday, but it's really just going to be a dry front. And then another reinforcing front will arrive on Sunday. That will cool us down into the 70s by the start of next week. But honestly, again, no real deal Arctic cold fronts for the next seven days. And unfortunately, no important rain to talk about either. Not agriculturally significant. No, it isn't. The winter garden suffering this year. All right. Thank you. All right. The coronavirus hitting the Texas Aggies football program, how that could impact their upcoming game in Tennessee this weekend. And the virus also impacting Judson High School, forcing them to postpone a big game this week. I have the details in sports next. Let's talk sports. Just when the fight in Texas Aggies are hitting their stride, they get hit with some bad news. All football operations have been shut down after the team learned of at least two positive coronavirus tests. This comes after the Aggies just had their best performance of the season, beating South Carolina on Saturday 48-3. to Not only did San Antonio's own Kellen Mond throw four touchdown passes in that game, he also ran one in. In doing so, Mond broke another school record for the most touchdown passes in his career. The Aggies now improved to 5-1 and one and are ranked number five in the nation. And with the schedule they have left, they can easily win out their final four and finish nine and one. However, Saturday's game in Tennessee now in jeopardy. We have uh, paused our practice activities for the day where we will not practice. We will meet on Zoom with our players uh, to uh, uh, watch the film and uh, do the things we have to do. We had uh, a couple positive cases of COVID after we got back and retesting and we suspended things for the protocols of safety protocols to make sure we do our quarantine uh, tracing and all the things that go by and we're retesting the whole team again today. And of course, stay in the protocols that go all during the week. So uh, we're in those processes now. So we don't, if there is more there, there is a spread. We're trying to prevent that and do everything from a safety issue with our players and our staff to uh, keep them as safe as possible. 
If that game is able to be played, kickoff against the Vols in Tennessee would be set for 2.30 this Saturday afternoon. And back here at home, the local high school football team also being dealt a blow. The much anticipated showdown between the number one ranked Judson Rockets and number three Smithson Valley Rangers has now been postponed. And Judson football is shutting down until November 17th. KSAT 12 Sports just happened to be on campus in Converse yesterday afternoon to do another story when the news broke. Rockets head coach Rodney Williams came out of a meeting with athletic director Mike Miller. That's when he addressed the team, which had just finished practicing in Rutledge Stadium. He told them that the game would have to be called off this Friday due to a positive COVID test and contact tracing. The game has tentatively been rescheduled for uh, December 4th at 7.30 right here. So everything will be the same. It's just that we're moving the dates back. Our district, in its wisdom, when in our district meetings, made an allowance for this kind of a, of a circumstance, and uh, this is the first game this year that, that the Judson Rockets have had to uh, kind of reschedule. Now with the Rangers and Rockets postponed until December 4th, our new big game of the week will feature the Johnson Jaguars trying to stay undefeated against Madison. That game Friday night at Heroes Stadium. Last week, Larry Ramirez spoke with a pair of cornerstone Christian football players who are advocates of cryotherapy. It's a type of therapy where you expose your body to extremely cold temperatures. Proponents of cryotherapy say it reduces inflammation, helps alleviate pain, boosts your energy and metabolism, and burns calories. Well, our Larry Ramirez decided to try it out for himself. Take a look. So you're going to step right up for me. I'm going to give you a nice little boost up. Sure. You got it. There you go. I already say to some the, the guy here right now, pump your legs a little. So by moving it around, it keeps the blood kind of flowing through, sure. so it doesn't feel as intensely cold. So far, it's not that bad. Yeah. <clears throat> so far. But now it's really starting. Yeah. To cold. So you've been in there for 30 seconds right now. This feels really good. The hotter it is outside, the better it feels too. Now my teeth are probably going to start chattering soon. <laughs> uh, all right, what am I? In? Minus 178. Okay, what am I at now? <laughs> 238. Minus 238. I don't know how easy it is to relax, though. I feel like you want to be a little bit. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. That's right. Go there. Where are you feeling it? My legs, for sure. Yeah. I'm not very cold up here. Yeah. It's the legs. Yeah. And they're starting to feel heavy. All right, you've got 20 seconds. You're almost done. How do penguins live in such cold weather? A Larry sickle there. <laughs> <laughs> he did not look country. His knees were knocking together. He survived. He was here this weekend and looked just fine. Yeah. No inflammation. No. Isn't that what it was supposed to do? His teeth were still chattering. Now. <laughs> <laughs> China stepping up its game by sending the world's first 6G satellite into orbit. What the 6G satellite could be used for if proven to work. Plus, virtual learning may not be as beneficial as some may think. Details on a new study that found kids may be losing their basic learning due to COVID-19 restrictions. President-elect Joe Biden is trying to prepare for his future administration, but he's facing mounting resistance from the current White House and some Republicans in Congress. I'm Rena Roy in Wilmington, Delaware, and I'll have the latest coming up. We're still more than two weeks away from Black Friday, but the deals are happening right now. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris explains which companies are offering steals and deals and why if you have something on your holiday shopping list, it's a good idea to start looking now. President-elect Joe Biden starting the first week of his transition focused on the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, President Trump is focused on voter fraud as he continues to allege that it happened in multiple states. And now Attorney General William Barr has authorized investigations into alleged voting irregularities before the results are even certified. ABC's Rena Rory has the latest. In a break with longstanding Justice Department policy, Attorney General William Barr is now authorizing federal prosecutors to investigate credible allegations of voter fraud before states have certified their elections. 
In a memo to all U.S. attorneys, Barr authorizing them to look into any clear and apparently credible allegations of irregularities that, if true, could potentially impact the outcome of a federal election in an individual state. Richard Pilger, the DOJ's top federal election crimes prosecutor, resigned in protest. In addition to that, the General Services Administration, which facilitates the transition of any new administration, says it has not ascertained that Biden is the winner, withholding crucial transition resources like funding, access to classified information, and secure office space. This as most Republican members of Congress stand by as the Trump campaign continues to promote claims the election may have been stolen. President Trump is 100 percent within his rights to look into allegations of irregularities and weigh his legal options. Federal and state judges have found no evidence of fraud despite the Trump campaign's numerous lawsuits. Amidst the partisan resistance, the Biden team still moving forward, unveiling their plans to tackle the coronavirus pandemic and unite the country. We can get this virus under control, I promise you. We can rebuild our economy back better than it was before. We can address race-based disparities that damage our country. It's in our power. So let's wear a mask. Let's get to work. The Biden transition team says they are considering taking legal action or pursuing other remedies if the General Services Administration keeps refusing to recognize their win. Rena Roy, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments today in a case that will determine the future of the Affordable Care Act. The court's decision next year could result in millions of Americans losing their health insurance as the nation continues to grapple with the pandemic. The court is hearing arguments in a case brought forward by the Trump administration and 18 Republican-led states aiming to invalidate the entire law. Millions of families and those who lost their jobs during the pandemic found relief in Obamacare. Virtual arguments in front of nine justices today are focused on whether Obamacare's individual mandate, which requires Americans to have health insurance, is unconstitutional. The Supreme Court is expected to make a decision on this case by June of next year. Now turning to the latest in the coronavirus pandemic, Brazil's health regulator has stopped clinical trials of the potential coronavirus vaccine, Coronavac, after a, quote, serious adverse event. The decision was posted on Anvisa's website. They didn't give any details on what had happened, but the action was a surprise from parties involved in producing the vaccine. The potential vaccine is being developed by Chinese biopharmaceutical firm Sinovac, and it would be produced locally by Sao Paulo state-run Butantan Institute. Some children may be losing their basic learning due to COVID-19 restrictions. That's according to a study done by the UK government. According to its report, some children without good support structures have lost some key skills in reading and writing, and some have even forgotten how to use a fork and knife. Some older children have lost physical fitness and are displaying signs of mental distress. Schools are being kept open during England's second national lockdown, the decision praised by the UK chief education inspector. However, an increasing number of parents in the UK are still choosing to homeschool their children. Antitrust charges have been filed against Amazon after it allegedly used data to gain an unfair advantage over merchants using its platform. The European Union's executive commission, the bloc's top antitrust enforcer, said today that the charges have been sent to the company. The commission said it takes issue with Amazon's systematic use of non-public business data to avoid the normal risks of competition and to leverage its dominance for e-commerce e services in France and Germany. These are the company's two biggest markets in the EU. The EU started looking into Amazon back in 2018 and has been focusing on its dual role as a marketplace and retailer. China stepping up their tech game by sending the world's first 6G satellite into orbit. The 70kg satellite was launched on a long March 6 carrier rocket to test the 6G technology, which would be more than 100 times faster than 5G, according to CGTN, China's state-owned media. According to state media, the 6G satellite will be used in areas like smart city construction, disaster prevention and mitigation, as well as environmental protection. 5G is just coming out and it's already obsolete.
It's like That's the new how it iPhone. Works, right? That's how technology works. Also obsolete today is the sun. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get here though. It'll get here by okay. the time uh, we see sunset around 541. We will see some sun around San Antonio today. And it's going to be a beautiful day after we get this cool front moving through. So I want to show you some observations around the area. Let's go ahead and take a look out at San Antonio International Airport. It's 73 degrees and cloudy in Kerrville. It's 66 and cloudy, but in Rock Springs, it's sunny. And the reason for that is the front that's moving through. You can see on the satellite imagery right now the cloud cover all around Bear County and up into the hill country as well. Kerrville, though, you are about to get total sunshine. Bandera, you're about to get sunshine as well. Lakey, Rock Springs already seeing the sun. And we'll go ahead and line out where that cool front is right now. You can see it when you look at the clouds. A little bit of light rain going on as well, but I bet by like 2 p.m. we'll be seeing some sun. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about Skies clearing this afternoon and how it'll become windy. Tomorrow is Veterans Day and this front is going to set up a beautiful Veterans Day. A cool sm start and a comfy afternoon. And coming up after the break, we're going to ch check in on the tropics. We've actually got overnight, we had a record breaking uh, event happen out in the Atlantic to make for a record breaking hurricane season of 2020. Kind of fits with the year, right? I'll have that and more coming up. Some holiday traditions may need to be put on hold during the pandemic, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend them alone. Tips to have a safe Thanksgiving with your loved ones still ahead. Speaking of Thanksgiving, United Airlines busy uh, gearing up for that Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Many flights the airline is now adding in order or how many they're adding to keep up with the increased demand. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. United Airlines gearing up for a busy Thanksgiving weekend. The airline giant now adding 1,400 flights to their schedule. That in order to keep up with what they say is going to be increased demand. The airline is expecting Thanksgiving weekend to be their busiest since the travel industry virtually shut down at the beginning of the pandemic. Meanwhile, Apple is expected to announce their next generation of computers at an event today called One More Thing. But these computers have a little bit of a twist. These are going to be powered by Apple chips instead of outsourced chips from Intel. They're going to be similar to the ones used in iPhones and iPads. The virtual event kicks off on Apple's website at 1 o'clock Eastern time today. And attention gamers, Microsoft's new Xbox console will officially hit shelves today after two months long wait. To celebrate the launch, the company will hold a variety of live streams as well as a holographic display in London. The new Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S gaming consoles will both be available online and in stores. And that's a Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Of course, nothing is the same in 2020. COVID-19's pandemic not only changing the way we do just about everything, but also how we handle our special occasions. And the upcoming holidays won't be immune. With Thanksgiving right around the corner, family settings have the potential for loved ones to unknowingly spread coronavirus. As with most things, we should expect Thanksgiving to look different this year due to COVID-19. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Joseph Cabaza says gatherings should be kept small. Any gathering uh, with family members has the risk of, of infecting uh, any of them. And, and, and of course, the more vulnerable are more likely likely to end up very ill. No gathering is, is totally safe unless it's just uh, really with the people under your own roof. If you do decide to plan a small gathering with immediate family, it's important to know what your guests are doing in their day-to-day -day lives so you can gauge the risk that they're going to bring to the table. For example, college students and school-aged children who are attending classes in person would fall into a higher risk category of being carriers of COVID-19. You'll also want to consider someone's workplace and personal life and whether COVID-19 precautions like masking are enforced and followed. If your guests are traveling, you should keep an eye on the COVID-19 case numbers in that area to determine their risk level. And if possible, high-risk guests should quarantine for 10 to 14 days before attending your event. When quarantine is not possible, wearing a mask during the gathering is recommended. 
These measures can be a tough sell for your loved ones, but protecting them can help ensure they'll be at the dinner table long after the pandemic is gone. The patients I've had who've been at other family gatherings and like weddings who've gotten sick, I mean, there's just been a tremendous amount of guilt that's left on the people hosting the event. Um, and I don't think you'll ever regret being extra cautious uh, in the middle of a pandemic. The regret can only occur um, if a loved one gets very sick as a result um, uh, of your gathering. And Metro Health is warning against traditional holiday gatherings this year, pointing out that the number of potential risks for exposure is actually inside your own home. Well, it is cloudy outside uh, and we are seeing a cool front move through. But for the break, I told you we would talk about the tropics. Of course, we've got Tropical Storm Ada, which brought devastation to Central America and brought a lot of flooding to South Florida. That's expected to fall apart over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but over in the open Atlantic, we have subtropical storm Theta. Now, this makes the 29th named storm of this Atlantic hurricane season, which is the most named storms of any Atlantic hurricane season, beating out 2005. Think about 2005, we had Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita. Back here at home, the aquifer is down three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, and today's light rain is not going to help us out at all. But in the pollen count, mold is thankfully low. We'll have to see how the cloudiness and the drizzle affects the pollen count. But coming up, I've got to look ahead to how this front is going to make for a beautiful Veterans Day after the break. Drippy, sloppy, nasty. Yeah, as we looked at those yeah. camera shots of the city earlier, it's hard to see anything, but it looks like it's starting to clear out a little bit. It there. is, especially north of us. So pretty soon those drippy, sloppy, it's going to turn into a breezy and sunny for the ah, rest of the day. So nice. at least it'll look beautiful outside. I really wish we could have got more rain out of this front, but it just wasn't in the cards today. A few light rain showers out there earlier, as well as some drizzle. And if you take a look outside at one of our live cams, it, it doesn't look very great outside, but this is just temporary. In fact, it's 72 degrees, so temperature dropped a degree and winds have picked up from the start of the newscast. At noon, it, winds were calm. Now winds are from the north northwest at about 15 miles per hour. That's because the front is moving through the airport as we speak. And when you look at the visible satellite imagery, I love this. I love how clear you can see where the front is. I bet you could at home too. Right on that line there of the thicker clouds is where the front is. Uh, and again, we could have some very light rain showers out there, but we're not seeing too much uh, on the radar at the moment. So I'll go ahead and draw where that front is right now. It's pushing through New Braunfels. It's pushing through the airport. It's pushing through Hondo and Yavaldi. And then you look out to the west and you can see the clearing skies there. Kerrville, you're about to see totally sunny skies. It's totally sunny at Lakey. And the way that you know the front has moved through is when those winds pick up from the north. Look at Port SA calm wind conditions. The front is not yet through, but as I said, at the airport, we've got a wind from the north at about 15 miles per hour, and we'll continue to see winds from the north at about 10 to 15 with gusts up to 20 for the rest of the day. When I look at the temperatures, we're not really seeing a huge, huge dip in temperatures. Up at Bernie Sage Airfield, it, it dipped briefly down into the upper 50s, but look out toward Kerrville. Temperatures are already rising because of the sunshine. It's 69 degrees in Kerrville, still 80 in Del Rio, and it's still 72 here in San Antonio. So I'm just going to show you the big difference that we'll see from this front. It's not the temperatures. It's not the rain. It is the humidity. Dew points behind this front are in the 30s. Very dry air. As we go throughout the rest of the day, dew points are going to fall. You'll notice the dry, crisp air moving in from the north. But unfortunately, this will be short lived. It's just the way that our fall has shaped up so far. Now tomorrow, Veterans Day, will have low humidity throughout the day, but watch as humidity quickly returns by Thursday. Now again, it won't be this oppressive humidity. You, walk, you don't, won't walk outside and feel a wall of water, but you will notice the mugginess in the air once again by Thursday. For the rest of the day, temperatures are going to coast in the 70s while the sun is out. Sun will set around a 541, and then we'll dip back down into the 60s 
by midnight will be in the upper 50s. And again, we will have a breezy wind from the north at about 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow is Veterans Day, and it's going to be beautiful as we celebrate the veterans in our lives. Uh, 52 to wake up in the morning hours. It's going to be cool, sunny with low humidity, and we'll warm up nicely. 80 degrees for the afternoon high, so if you plan on doing a backyard barbecue, looks pretty great for that. North Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Showing you the dew point tracker because that's the thing that's going to change the most. The dew point, as we've mentioned. Uh, so dew points and humidity returns uh, to the higher level by Friday. Friday, we're going to have that uh, drizzle in the air probably and then once again we'll get another dry cool front on the weekend it'll really only drop our temperatures a little bit still waiting on that strong cold arctic front that'll eventually be in our future in the winter but for now we just have to deal with the mild and muggy conditions of november we'll be right back Just in time for the holidays, the San Antonio Spurs have announced a magical drive through experience at the AT&T Center this holiday season. Illuminite will feature a mile-long trail that will snake around the AT&T Center. Photo opportunities with Santa, food, and 3D displays will also be part of the event. It's $35.50 per vehicle. You can also purchase an express pass at $63 per car. The event is set to start on November 19th and will run through January 3rd. We have more information right now on KSAT.com. Today on SA Live, fall fun, desserts, and the youngest female pit master in Texas. Mike and Fiona are at America's largest indoor water park resort up in Round Rock right now. So it's an encore presentation that you'll see today. A corny maze, a corn cannon, fall photos, a petting zoo. They have it all at Trader's Village right now at their corny maze. Fiona goes and checks it out. Plus, a brand new Inclusion Tuesday with Morgan's Wonderland. The park may be closed right now, but it is still finding ways to help out the community. And today, it's all about helping seniors and people with Alzheimer's-related dementia. That's all straight ahead on SA Live in just a few minutes.